everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to another episode here of the Calamity Playthrough. Once again, back for another pre-recorded episode, but I want to thank you guys for all of your wonderful support as of late. I really do appreciate it. Of course, if you want to continue supporting this series and want to continue seeing more, do be sure, of course, to head down below the video, drop a like, I'd really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on my future content. And of course, if you do want to go on further with your support, you can use code Python when ordering any of my Apex gaming PCs for 5% off. Now, once again, the reason I bring up the fact that these are pre-recorded is the fact that, again, I haven't had a chance to put your guys' comments and suggestions into effect yet. But there is one thing I would like to give a go. We need to pop into the Frost Moon chest and we need to get this bad boy out. This is what I would like to give a go against the Ravager in today's episode. It's the homing missiles part of this that is really attractive to me. So, what we're going to do is we're going to check out what it can be made into, the Scorpio. But that is not made until we've taken down both the Lunatic Cultist and the Mage Pillar, the Nebula Pillar. So, uh, yeah, maybe something to bear in mind. But uh, for now, what we're going to do is we're going to give this a bit of a reforge, get a bit of Unreal on it. And then, uh, yeah, maybe the homing ability on the Snowman Cannon might be enough to take down the Ravager. So then, a little bit of Unreal would be amazing. 147 range damage. That is a fair decrease compared to the high. Hive, but the hive does not home in so yeah are we really about to sack off what nearly 30 damage for the sake of being able to have homing projectiles i mean i guess okay right this should be an interesting one my friends i once again don't really have any ideas as to the sort of attack patterns this guy has so it really is going to be a case of us just finding out as time goes on really uh so let's make sure we've got all of our summon dudes ladies and gentlemen it's the ravager again so what i have noticed is we need to be especially careful of all of the walls be careful of the walls and we can avoid one big sort of damage that's being done to us here look at that they sort of move at a pretty incredible movement speed oh darn it i've already taken damage you hate to see it all right so Already noticing... Oh, god damn it! Already noticing a pretty decent amount of damage being done to the Ravager body parts. And I did do a little bit of wiki trawling before this episode began. Yes, similar to Gollum, you have to go ahead and take down the limbs before you can start doing damage to the main body himself. And I'm nearly dead because I'm just not concentrating because I'm trying to be a YouTuber. Ah! I can't concentrate and do things at once, man! It's not possible! Once again, temporarily, I'm going to have to retire being a YouTuber and I'm going to have to go full concentration mode on this because I can't. I just can't do it. I'm not a multitasker. I can't do it. All right. Attempt number two for the episode. It's the walls. We need to be careful for the walls. That's what we got to do. Oh, gee whiz. I didn't mean to do that. God damn it. All right. What are the chances? This guy's going to despawn now, huh? It's going to happen. I can feel it. I can feel it. He's going to despawn on me. He can't even get back up here anymore. What a doofus. <laughs> okay. He decided to jump into my grill. That's how he died on that occasion, is it? I hate to see it. When the walls decide to spawn in, maybe we roam over to the other side in an attempt to try to avoid it, okay? I'm imagining there's going to be some more walls any second now. Yep, there we are. What we're going to do is go to our left. And yeah, I'm not entirely sure that's actually working. Okay, again with the wall, it's going to jump. And it jumps quite some height as well. But uh, yeah, not too bad. Okay, they've landed. We move on over to our left. And the walls have actually stayed away. Okay, excellent. So, there's going to be some more walls, and again, we're going to move to our left. Again. Alright, the walls are managing to keep up. I actually managed to get adrenaline. First time doing that. If that isn't a sign that I am improving at this particular boss fight, I don't know what is. Ah! Not cool, boo-boo. Not cool. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, we are actually now doing damage to him. Interesting. Alright. Very interesting. What the hell is that following us around? There's like a mini friggin' Ravager dude. What the? 
Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's see if we can't focus this guy down. Okay. Mini guy needs to go bye byes Mini guy needs to go bye byes There we are. Oh, no, no. Oh, my God. His movement speed is fudging insane. What the crap? Okay. The good news is we made progress. Okay. I'll give myself that. We made progress progress we actually managed to start doing damage to he himself but yeah didn't know that there was going to be a little mini ravager tried to fly around us and uh, try to kill us so uh that's an interesting one yeah another chalked attempt because he managed to fly beneath our platform i'm starting to think that our platform is actually too high up uh huh all right, well, uh, maybe we try a slightly lower platform because if he does wind up falling to the floor, A, that's unfortunate, but B, if that does wind up being the case, then maybe we could still see him on the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the day for the Ravager. We're not stopping this episode until the Ravager is dead. He's dead on the floor in front of us, and we are having ourselves a big old celebration because we did manage to take him out. But uh, yeah, we've got to actually get to that point first, eh? For God's sake! My concerns with this boss were very valid at the start, weren't they? There really is like 700 different things you need to be keeping an eye on, man. Not once in this series have I ever thought that uh, a death mode boss is actually a little bit too much. This might be the first one. This might be the first time I might not be able to do this in death mode. I honestly believe I've got the right loadout, though. Oh, wait. I say, as I've still got the greedy ring on. I keep forgetting to take off the greedy ring. Why am I so unbelievably stupid? Ah! Well then, ladies and gentlemen, let's try something different. We are going to go for maximum defense, but decrease damage first. And then, while well, failing that, maybe we try the increased jump speed and movement speed in general. So we just went from 119 defense up to 158. That's a hefty, hefty increase. Could be the difference between life and death. All right, so it seems to me when you take down the little mini Ravager, he starts to go a little bit berserk. All right. Oh, it's those walls, though, man. It's the walls. They literally summon in directly in front of you. It's very, very hard to avoid. Ah! Okay, so now we got to do a little bit of a switcheroo here. Ah! Stop summoning these sodding walls, you son of a gun. Right, it seems to be every other hop, though. I'm noticing that at the very least. Every other hop. Okay. It's information like that that's going to keep us alive. The good news is, he doesn't seem to have any issues keeping up with us, even if he falls down to the ground. So, that's okay. I'll tell you what, this is definitely our best attempt so far, my friends. There is no doubt about that. I imagine there might be a second phase. That's the sort of thing that Calamity Mod does. Interestingly, we're barely taking any damage whatsoever. Maybe this armor was always the way to go. All right, some more walls. Okay back the other way. Okay. We're starting to get there, my friends. So nothing on that one. There's going to be a wall on this one. No? Okay, maybe the next one is dead. Wall. There we are. Okay. Do you know what? This isn't going bad. This isn't going bad. We're almost getting our adrenaline again. In fact, there it is. Holy crap. Dude, hang on a minute. <laughs> I think I was just using the wrong armor, you know? Okay, come on now. Don't get ahead of yourself, though, Python. Don't get ahead of yourself. It's those walls that are going to kill us if they do. There we are. A little bit of that. The walls are about to freaking get broken. There's going to be another one spawning on this landing. There we have it. Okay, I'm starting to learn this now. We've almost had this guy in the bag, guys. Ah. Okay, there's going to be a wall on this one. No? Next one. Ah, uh, oh, he's dead. <laughs> A simple armor set change would do it. It did. <laughs> and we learned his attack patterns. Oh, dudes. Dudes. Dudes, 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 dudes. <laughs> Bloody well did it, didn't we? Oh, dude. We actually just did that. We actually just did that. Oh, you love to see it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the law. A sickening flesh golem built for the sole purpose of savage, relentless destruction. Yeah, bloody well tell me about it. Christ. The monstrosity was a desperate bid to turn the tides against my God-seeking armies. I could scarcely believe it myself, but it was born of a ritual of great sacrifice performed in ardent faith. The ritual condemned and fused the bodies and souls of their fallen allies into this hideous thing. When the warlocks pledged their very lives to it as an offering it awoke and swiftly slew them now caked in fresh blood it hungered for more and set off on an aimless rampage i suppose its brutality serves as a reminder to be careful what you believe quite so my friends i still can't believe we did that i'll be honest i didn't think we would do it that quickly i'm pretty sure we're only like halfway through this entire episode and we've already got this thing done i thought it would take the whole episode well, there you have it. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, opening up the treasure bag. What do we have here? We've got a fleshy geode. Do we have a mask by any chance? No. Stone pile. We've got the Ultimus Cleaver. Whoa! That's a lot of projectiles, isn't it? Let's see what it can do. Oh, my God. You know, as, as nice as all of these effects are... We haven't got a great amount of damage per second going on here. Hmm. I don't know if that's any good. Right. Realm Ravager converts musket balls into explosive bullets. Shoots a burst of three to four bullets. Ooh. Okay. Well, it doesn't do a great amount of DPS again. What about the Hematemsis? Hematemsis? Whoa! Okay, they come up from the floor. Interesting. And then we've got the Blood Pact. Doubles your max HP. Allows you to be critically hit. Oh, dear. That does not sound like a good thing. After a crit hit, you gain various buffs for 10 seconds. Any healing potions consumed during this time period heals 50% more health. Wow. Okay. What is this made into? The core of the Blood God. Oh, my word. Huh. Okay. That actually sounds a bit better than what we've got going on here. Yeah. I don't want to have critical strike hits being done to me. So eventually I'd like to upgrade it into the core of the blood god. Because as you can see, this thing does not give you the chance of being critted by enemies. So yeah. I mean, it's a nice concept. But I'm not getting critted. No way, Jose. We've also got this here. The infernal blood permanently increases the duration of rage mode by one second. Only one second? Is that it? Huh? Okay. Right. Fleshy dude. Right click to open. Oh my word. It's a resource grab bag. Oh, you love to see that. That's excellent. <laughs> well then, ladies and gentlemen, the question is this. How many treasure bags will we be able to purchase from the operator here? We are, of course, looking for the modded treasure bags. There's the Ravager one coming in at a whopping near five platinum. And that is with the greedy ring on. That is expensive. Do we or do we not have a mask in here? Oh, we've got a couple of different things. We've got the Vesuvius. Whoa. Holy crap. You know, I seem to remember this being an old legendary drop. Am I right in thinking that? Pretty sure. I remember a Vesuvius back in the day. Anyways, we have a Spike Crag Staff. Wait, is that supposed to be like a sentry? It is, because it's got purple damage as opposed to pink. We've got the Ravager Claw, which has far superior stats compared to the Bat Hook. So, uh, yeah... The Ravager Claw, most definitely going on there, my friendos. What else have we got here? We have another team mod loader set, and then we got a school balloon. <laughs> Why not, man? All right, another one. What do we got here? A Cranium Smasher is a rogue weapon, would you believe? Another Vesuvius as well. A Flesh Totem halves enemy contact damage. When you take contact damage, this effect has a 20-second cooldown. And this can be made... Oh, so we require Cosmolite bars from the Devourer of God later on down the line. Oh my word. That is going to be a hell of a long way off. Yeah, look at this. Just seems to leave a whole bunch of projectiles on the floor. Throw discs that roll on the ground. Occasionally launches an explosive disc. Stealth strikes launch an explosive disc that can pierce several enemies. Ooh. All right. Another Ravager treasure bag. Another dev set. We have yet another rogue weapon, though. Ow. Okay. 
So it's the Corpus Averter attacks grant lifesteal based on damage dealt. The lower your HP, the more damage this weapon does and heals the player on enemy hits. Stealth strikes throw a single rainbow outline dagger. On enemy hits, this dagger boosts the damage and life regen of all members on your team. However, there is a small chance it will cut your health in half instead. Uh, no. That doesn't sound very good. Okay, we've probably got enough here for maybe two more of these treasure bags. Okay, boom. Uh, fleshy geode. Uh, oh, hello. Is that... That's a... Hey. Okay, so this one has got even better stats. The scavenger claw compared to the ravager claw. And look at that. We did indeed get the ravager mask. Excellent. Love to see it, my friends. Love to see it. We got a school cluster from the Calamity Vanities mod as well. Oh, very cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Ravager is finito. Yeah. Boof. There we have it. Man, I won't lie. That boss took a while to learn, but we learned. We got there in the finish, didn't we? So, yeah, you got to give yourself a bit of a pat on the back sometimes, eh? I mean, I persevered. I got through it. All is well. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. So, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next is the Lunatic Cultist and the Celestial Pillars. You see, once we get an ancient manipulator, oh man, is it game over. We are going to be able to craft so many upgrades, it's going to be bonkers. Oh man, am I looking forward to this. I have a feeling we might even be able to do this now. With the snowman cannon and our rocket threes, I think we'll be able to do this. And then yeah, next episode, we will hopefully do the celestial pillars depending on how the lunatic cultist fight goes. So ladies and gentlemen, let's make sure we're buffed up. It looks like we are, but we're just going to make double sure here. I'm uh, going to make sure we've got all of our summons on. And uh, yeah, we're heading on over to the dungeon. Boom, 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 boom. And they're all dead. Right. Uh, oh, no, now the guy's dead. Okay, excellent. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the lunatic cultist. Right, what is going on, and why has he got a bubble around him? That is concerning. Uh, but, uh, you know, so far so good. Still seem to be absolutely tearing this guy a new one, which is good to see. Wondering if I can get myself a little bit of adrenaline. That would be nice. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, make that present tense. We do have adrenaline. Nice. Alrighty, already at half health. Oh, I just got frozen. Whoa, 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 whoa there, son. Okay. Yeah, that's concerning. He froze me midair and disabled my ability to shoot. I don't like that, son. I don't like that at all. But never mind. We are still tearing this guy apart. And, uh, oh my word, what the hell is going on now? Oh, uh -huh. Oh, God. There's like 15 new types of projectiles following me here. Uh, <laughs> this is alarming. There's a lot going on here. Look at all these projectiles, though, dude. What the? There's like five different lunatic cultists now? Oh, my word. All right, making sure we're using the rage buff here. Probably should have been uh, keeping an eye on that just a little bit earlier. But uh, never mind. Oh, jeez. Oh, Please allow me to move again. That'd be good. Uh, right. Not looking very good in terms of health here, my friends. I've got to be honest with you. But I'll tell you who's looking even worse. He is. And I'm going to... <laughs> sure. Thanks for that, Terraria. <laughs> you had to have the last lap. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. Oh, my word. Right, all I'm trying to do is get the law items and whatever else is around it. Right, there's the law item. The unfortunate thing is, I uh, I can't go back to base because <laughs> it's been overrun. You hate to see it, but ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Lunatic Cultist, we done did it. The only thing we didn't get was the Master Mode Drop, which is something we still need to try and get. So, to finish off, we do have the lore item here. Prelude, presumably, for this guy, right? In ages past, now named the Draconic Era, the majestic dragons protected Terraria from all threats. Their famed might was put to the ultimate test by an aberrant behemoth from beyond the stars. I assume that's referring to Moonlord. 
Fighting with all their strength, the dragons could wound and weaken it, but not destroy it. Lacking options, they tore the monster down to a shadow of its former self and sealed it away. What is left of it now lies imprisoned in the moon. There you have it. Confirmation right there. As far away as the dragons could banish it. Much of dragonkind was lost as casualties in that struggle and they never recovered. Zeratros himself was gravely injured. It seemed his power, along with his life, would be lost forever. One mortal, sworn to the service of the dragons, rose in determination to save the virtuous king. Ooh, interesting stuff. But there we are, my friends. There is the ancient manipulator. Oh, dude. <laughs> Next episode is the celestial episode. What we need to do, though, is we need to prioritize the nebula pillar. You might remember there was an upgraded version of of what was it the snowman cannon that i could make oh yeah and that's what it required nebula fragments the scorpio yeah baby <laughs> right click to fire a nuke yeah seems pretty good huh and then after that it could be made into the pack coming in at a whopping 1465 damage which requires a cosmic anvil holy crap holy so, ladies and gentlemen, on that successful note, that is two major bosses taken down in today's episode. If that doesn't deserve a like, I don't know what does. And more to the point, we took down the lunatic cultist first time, which is epic. My friends, thank you very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's action-packed episode, and of course you're excited to see more, please do be sure to head down below the video and spend a second to drop a like if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button, don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I'll bid you farewell. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.